We've talked a lot about research and preclinical activities up to this point, but now we're closing in on actual treatment and possibly prevention. You've probably heard some stories about how a person who carried a specific gene has an increased risk of a specific disease. A recent and famous example is Angelina Jolie's decision to undergo a double mastectomy. Jolie discovered that she carried a rare mutation of the BRCA gene that increased her risk of developing breast cancer by almost 90%. She wrote in an op-ed piece in the New York Times that her chances of developing breast cancer have dropped from 87% to under 5% due to her decision. It's a strong example of the power of genetic testing and preemptive medicine and really increased awareness of both issues. It's one thing to understand which genes carry risk factors, but how do you learn if you carry those genes? Let's talk about pharmacogenomics a bit. Pharmacogenomics refers to the ability to test for variations in genes and their expression through molecular diagnostics and then to treat with targeted drugs. For now, we'll focus on the variation testing part. Doctors have the ability, usually just by drawing blood, to test patients for any number of genetic abnormalities. An example you may already be familiar with is amniocentesis. Amniocentesis is a test where, using a syringe, a small amount of amniotic fluid is removed from the amniotic sac that surrounds a developing fetus and tested for a number of chromosomal abnormalities, including Down syndrome, Edwards syndrome, and Turner syndrome. It's usually given to high-risk mothers, but the point here is that it's a test that provides genetic information. And what you do with that information is where a lot of ethics conversations start to appear. Let's look at this issue from an insurer's perspective. Suppose someone was looking to get a health insurance policy. Would you give a policy to someone who you knew had a strong chance of receiving a cancer diagnosis? From a business perspective, you'd probably at least consider denial. Luckily for us, you can't. The Genetic Information Non-Discrimination Act, which was signed by George W. Bush in 2008, prohibits the use of genetic information in both health insurance and employment. Thanks for watching. Next time in our final video in this series, Andrew will talk you through some examples of personalized medicine and cancer.